We welcome in John Schuster. He is the U.S. curling captain or the skip. Schuster, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing, just uh, <clears throat> hanging out, being an Olympian in the village. <laughs> It is. Uh, it, you already had your match earlier today, and because you're on the show, we can't spoil it. You, you got your first win of the Olympic round robin. That's got to feel awfully good. Yeah, I mean, uh, it it had kind of been going south for both uh, us and the ladies team to start. Didn't uh, didn't get wins right off the bat, but uh, to get one today was definitely good. We're still very, very in the tournament, so. Is it uh, well? First, how did you get into it? Now, I, I don't know. Are you a Wisconsin or a Minnesota native? I'm a Minnesota native. So. Okay. Uh, well, you can. We'll, we'll allow you to call Wisconsin home if you want. Um, it, how did you get started? I mean, are you 10, 11 years old? I mean, when did you start? When did you first time on a rink? Actually, I don't think I threw my first rock till I was 13 um, up in a small town that had a curling club and, um, and a junior night on Sunday nights. And I still played basketball for a couple more years, curling on the weekends, kind of uh, in secret because we're from a basketball town where they didn't really want you doing anything else in the winter. And uh, after eighth grade, I finally hung up the basketball shoes and uh, got serious about curling and uh, have had a pretty good ride since. So. No no skates for you, John? I mean, you, you, you no, didn't grow no up playing skates. hockey. No, no. I was, uh, it's just one of those things that when you grow up in a basketball town, it's, uh, you know, unless you're coming from a hockey background, I don't think uh, many people in Chisholm played hockey. So, How much confidence is gained by getting a win, and is there such a thing as momentum in curling? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, getting getting a win, I think, that kind of takes a little bit of pressure off. That first win seems to always be the toughest in, you know, any big competition, whether it be world championships or nationals, Olympic trials, Olympics. So, um, you know, we're really looking forward to getting back on the ice after, you know, getting a big win today. John Schuster, U.S. curling captain for the men. They got a win earlier today. Is there any trash talk ever in curling? <laughs> no. Never? No, no. It's uh, no, not, not so much, you know, it, Every now and again, you might throw out a tweet that you know says they're going to go, you know, like I, you know, beat the pants or something like that. But that's, uh, you know, <laughs> what we call Norway. Everybody just refers to them as the pants now, since that's what they do. So, how come? But that's uh, about the extent of it. Hey, it's John, a gentleman's game. John, how come you haven't uh, gone off fashionable like uh, you know some of the other countries have? Uh, I mean, today I think they were plus fours on. Is it Norway or? Yeah, they were uh, they were rocking the the Payne Stewart look today. Right, <laughs> and have you have you proposed that and been shot down? What if what if uh, your other uh, mates came to you and said, "Hey, let's let's rock something uh, fashionably exotic." Yeah, I don't know that I I don't know that I got the uh, the ability to pull that off. So we just <laughs> like to focus on our game and uh, <laughs> try to look as good as uh, as Nike can make us look. So, and uh, yeah. I think we look pretty darn good. John, what is, uh, you know, we talked uh, earlier with um, uh, Brad Keselowski, who's on the NASCAR circuit. They get underway with Daytona next week and, and asked him about what sports he can't do away. Are there limitations? Are there things that you can't do away from curling for fear of injury? Um, yeah, actually, you know, I used to, growing up, um, you know, up up on the lakes would wakeboard a bunch in the in the summertime because it's not curling season. And, uh, Actually, I've, I've never been on a snowboard, and, and I wakeboarded a ton, but I've just never been on a snowboard because, you know, every single year, you know, whether it be like late in the, um, you know, curling for us when you go to nationals and worlds and that kind of stuff goes through the end of March, and then uh, snow's gone. So I've actually never snowboarded one of these years. It's on my bucket list. Is uh, let, Let's talk about a couple of things. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the future of this tournament. What do you believe your chances are to be in medal contention when it's all said and done? Um, you know, if we play like the the way we played today, we kind of have it going in the right direction, and um, you know, we can we can definitely play with every single team here. So, um, you know, we we come up with the intensity we had today. I I like our chances of being around um, in the medal round, and then once we get to the medal round, you know, anything can happen. You guys, uh, we're talking with John Schuster. He is the U.S. curling captain in the Olympic Games in Sochi, Russia. When you guys are yelling after the stone leaves the the thrower's hand, th there is communication. Yelling. I know you're talking about you're doing numbers. Is that uh, related to speed or line? What are you yelling? Communicate that with us. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is uh, from end to end. Like they're trying to tell me how how far they think a rock is going to go, or how, what the what we call it, what the weight is coming at us. And then um, based on, you know, how the person threw it is, a, you know, on the line that they delivered it on um, and, and the communication that they send to me, then we kind of uh, decide whether we're going to sweep it or not. And, uh, you know, if I t usually if I'm yelling, it's because we have to sweep for line where we need it to, you know, maybe not curl 
as much as so we're going to sweep it and try to keep it straighter. So it's uh, it's all it's all communication, and you end up being loud because you know there's four other games or three other games at the Olympics going on at the same time that your game's going on, and you know I'm uh, so I guess I was kind of built for that because I'm kind of loud. <laughs> All right, so we're going to ask you to be a little bit loud right now. Can you give us a call? Uh, can you give us a call on a stone that you think is is too light and, and offline in, in full voice? So back away from the phone just a, just a little bit. Give us a full voice call on a throw. I'm, a, I'm going to have people walking over here from the other the, next room it, over at the village. The but, entire uh, the entire country <laughs> of the United States is listening for your call right now. All right. Hurry hard hard. <laughs> Where else could you there hear you that type of uh, authority? <laughs> <laughs> only at a curling rink. <laughs> no, it's not the only place. Um, all right, so what is next? How do you celebrate your win today? Uh, you know, for us, we just, uh, whether whether we win or lose, we just try to stick to our schedule, um, you know, after games. And, you know, we definitely, you know, you could see it in everybody's shoulders with held, holding a little bit up high. And uh, and we, we actually went and uh, watched the U.S. and Canada women's hockey, which is a heck of a game today, so. Yeah, you know, I, I've grown up and spending uh, the bulk of my life in Wisconsin. I've been to, to curling rinks. For those who, who have never experienced it, and I know that in that part of the country uh, and here in the Northeast and the Northwest as well, the rinks get a little popular right now. They get phone calls. Hey, is there open or how do we learn how to do it? But some people don't recognize that quite like bowling, it's a very social and it's a beer drinker's sport, not in your world, but in the casual world. Sure. No, it's, it's absolutely a social sport. You know, it's, we have a kind of, it's kind of like a, you know, like a fraternity, like amongst curlers and um, very welcoming curling clubs. And it's, it's really a great place. You know, you can go and and you walk in the door and somebody realizes you don't know what's going on and they'll kind of come over to you and try to help you ex- explain the game and, you know, see what the interest level is. And that's how a lot of people really, you know, later in their lives get started in our sport and, that's always such great curling clubs across uh, the upper Midwest, and now we're starting to find more popping up across the country. John, when you uh, when you win a medal and after that ceremony, would you uh, would you send us something to the man cave here, something to commemorate, whether that's a broom or a sock or one of those flat shoes that slides? Or <laughs> we're, we're going to need something autographed from from you and Team USA for the man cave. It, it can join Derek Jeter's shoes and. and uh, baseballs and footballs that are here. Would you do that for us? I'm sure we can find something to uh, to send down to the man cave after we medal here. Yeah, we're Why gonna, not? We're going to hold you to it. So just go out and keep <laughs> winning and uh, find that momentum, carry it forward. And thanks for spending a little time with us. Uh, best of luck moving forward. All right. Thanks a lot, Mike. John Schuster, USA curling captain.